Buzz Lightyear to the rescue. And this is the Disney Buzz Lightyear large model. I think it's 30 centimeters tall. So it is the deluxe model. And um, there's a quick scan at the back. And it actually interacts with other toys. I haven't got any of, the, of these Disney toys. I've only got a Buzz Lightyear, but it does interact with them. So if you, get, if you bring another Disney toy close to it, they'll speak to each other. Here's a part list of all the items I had to buy to modify Buzz Lightyear, which are all readily available from Amazon at quite cheap prices. And if you're interested in making this or a similar project, I'll leave product links to these items in the video description below. The first stage of this project was to make a lever switch powered by a solenoid to activate the voice button on Buzz, because I didn't want to dismantle Buzz to connect directly to his inner circuitry in case I broke him. And I thought it would be more fun to have a moving lever switch anyway, which would also help him to scare the crows. This lever switch started out as a simple piece of wood from a plant label, which I stuck onto Buzz's body with very sticky and strong T-Rex tape, but it was a bit temperamental and so it progressed to a slightly more sophisticated lever switch, which now included a Magnum Chokai stick glued onto it with a hinge glued onto that. The hinge being made from an ink tube from a Biro pen with some wire pushed through it. And this latest version of the lever switch was a lot more reliable. The next stage of the project was to build the infrared motion detector circuit, which would trigger the lever switch to get Buzz to say one of his famous phrases when myself or a warm-blooded animal such as a crow came into range. The sensitivity of the infrared motion sensor could also be adjusted. And now it was time to connect this circuit to Buzz and test it out. Fingers crossed. Yeah. He's there. Yes, he does work. There, look, that's detected me. The yes, it works. it works. It works. Test number two. Oh, yeah, it works. How good is that? I've introduced a timer delay circuit. This is a timer delay, delay module. So that when uh, anything activates the motion sensor, it triggers a countdown and then after 10 seconds then it triggers Buzz Lightyear. The idea behind this is that when the crows come to the pond it gives them a few seconds to actually get walk around and you can get some better footage rather than it activates as soon as they fly in. It's just triggered it and now there's a 10 second countdown and if you can see that This planet is toxic. Closing Hammond to conserve us. So that's great. After doing a bit of soldering, tidying up the wiring and sticking everything onto Buzz, he was now complete and ready to test outside. But there was one last thing I needed to do and that was to make Buzz a platform for him to stand on so that he was in the correct position next to my container pond. And conveniently I had some spare wooden planks to make this from. And then disaster happened. I was carefully positioning Buzz on this platform and then he decided to go for a dive headfirst into my container pond. And the whole of his head and arms went into the pond. I think he was training for the Olympic diving team. Either that or he was complaining about being on a short-term contract. But fortunately, uh, after drying him out, he was okay. He did have a bit of muffled speech for a while, but when he was completely dry, he was fine. So that was lucky. So I decided to build him a little base out of a, the bottom of, of a container pot and screw him onto this wooden platform to make him a bit more stable. After repositioning Buzz outside next to my garden container pond, I tested him out. As you can see, this test worked fine and he was triggered by me from about two meters. 
and then the countdown timer started. So that was great. But I have to say that outside, it is a bit more temperamental with the infrared motion sensor because you've got a lot more variables. You've got the wind, you've got the heat of the day, especially if it's a very hot day, and you've got insects buzzing around that can also trigger the sensor. Whereas, whereas compared to inside, inside is perfectly uh, consistent and is very stable and it's good fun as well using them inside. So this was the challenge. And I so wanted him to work to scare the birds and the crows. So the first thing I need to do was try and attract the birds back to the pond with a bit of bread because they weren't used to seeing him standing there. And then fingers crossed, hoping that he would work. And the other thing I did is I increased the timer to 20 seconds just to give a bit more time for the birds to get close to birds. No time to explain. Attack! No time to explain. Attack! So as you can see, birds did manage to scare a magpie, which technically is a crow. Well, it's crow related, so I see that as a success. And I will be doing some more infrared motion detector projects in the future, and I may even do some more modifications to birds as well. So if you're interested in those type of videos, please hit the subscribe button. And in the meantime, if you like this video, please thumbs it up and share. And thanks for watching.